Good morning. I don't know if anyone is online now, but I'm going to record this. I was sitting in my, back in my studio, and uh, this word came up in my heart, and I'm going to uh, read it to you. It's quickened to me, so I'm going to read it to you and do a little word study on it. Hi. I am. You're watching. I got one watching me. That's enough. Amen. Anybody else come on line? Come on line. Can you hear me okay? This is word from the from Proverbs. Proverbs 4:23, and uh, I'm gonna read it to you from the New American Standard Version. Hi, Robert. How are you doing? Proverbs 4:23. This is this is the way the way the Holy Spirit deals with me. He'll he'll bring up a, a verse to me, and uh, then I'll go dig it out. And this is quite a familiar verse to me. I've heard it just about all my life. But uh, I believe it's a word for right now. Amen? A now word. Hi, Charles. Uh, you're on here quite a bit, Charles. Oh, appreciate you. Appreciate all of you. Uh, Proverbs, let me again. You get started here. <laughs> Proverbs 4.23. Watch, watch over your heart with all diligence for from it from your heart flow the springs of life flow the springs of life the new living translation uh, it reads this way guard your heart above above all else for it determines it determine your heart determines the course of your life determines the course of your life. Now, I'm not I'm, I'm not speaking down to anybody. I'm not trying to. I'm only I want you to get this. The word heart here, because we know this was, this is in Proverbs, isn't it? It's in the Old Covenant uh, or the the Old Testament. So it's written in Hebrew. The word heart there is the word. Lebe, Lebe, that's what it's translated into English, Lebe, Leb, Leb, and it's defined as the inner man, the mind, will, the heart, the understanding, the inner part, your inner part, your, your, the soul, your soul, your mind, not necessarily not talking about your brain, but your the mind. The fact is, science is scientific research now on the heart says that the heart, as does all the all the cells of your body, contain actually contain uh, memory and intelligence. And according to the uh, I believe it's the heart Institute for Heart Research, that the heart, the physical heart. Of a human being contains uh, more intelligence than the the our the, this part of our our brain. This up in your head. That's why the Bible says all this. Jesus says he, he says believe with your heart. That's how you got born again, or born from above. He said you believe in your heart, the innermost part of your being. And then later on, it you know through through meditating in the word and through studying the word of God it works its way up to your your intellect your intellects up here but your heart is, is you're the center of your being is your heart and uh, it's the place of it's the place where your inclinations are or what you're inclined to do come from your heart you have you ever you know you you, you know 
when you go to do something that your your head may be telling you one thing, but your heart's down in here, something's telling you different. Uh, your the seat of reason is in your in your brain, and so when you, you when you hear something or you see something, immediately as a result of the fall, actually, because that's where the tree of the knowledge of good and evil operate is in your in this part of you. But that's why you're saved. Your 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 heart is saved first, and then your mind is renewed. So your heart, so the the writer of Proverbs says, it says to, gu- to guard over or to watch over your heart above all else. I, I, you know, I, I st- get on YouTube a lot and, 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 and I, in our country, in the United States, there's a lot about preparation. Uh, there are even people called preppers that, that are really into they're they're preparing for some kind of disaster or some kind of uh, uh, natural calamity or uh, you know the the antichrist taking over the world and persecution and tribulation and you know they lay up food they lay up weapons they lay up <clears throat> places to hide out and I'm not I think we should be prepared for any kind of thing in the natural as we're led by the spirit. But here, the, I believe the Lord is, is giving us a key here, telling us that the most important thing to prepare or to guard over is your heart. Is your heart. I'm not saying to lay aside, you know, taking care of the things in the natural, but, but if you don't take care of your heart, I'm not talking physically. I, th- I believe you should take care of it physically also, because if that's where it, you know God operates out of it, it should be. But your heart is the, is the, actually the center of your being of, as, you, as a human being, your three-part spirit, soul, and body. Your heart is. So he says, guard above, guard your heart above all else. What do, what's guard mean? It means to watch over it. Watch over it. Be aware of it. Keep it. And this is this is another Hebrew word. To, the word to guard or to watch is nets, netsar, netsar in Hebrew. It means to guard, to watch over, to keep, to preserve, to guard from danger. There are dangers to your heart. To keep, observe, to guard with fidelity. To guard, to keep secret. Some things you need to keep secret in your heart. You don't need to share with everybody. You need to keep them in your heart. To be kept close and to be blockaded or to be defended, like put a place. Of, now, I'm not saying keep you, we're not talking about keeping people out or hardening your heart. These are all phrases we're familiar with. The word netzar also means to be a watchman or to watch over your heart. You have to be aware of your heart. A lot of times you, people, human beings are more aware of their, just their physical bodies or if there are aches and pains and a sickness or taking care of their uh, uh, the provision of their, cl- their clothing or their food. But here again, the Lord's saying right now, now this is a word, this is a word. Uh, he got ears to hear. Hear it. In the times we're living in, the most, the most important thing for you to guard over and to prepare is your heart, because out of there is where God, where the Creator, Yahweh, where He, He flows. That's where the Holy Spirit uh, has His connection with your soul and your spirit. Is your is your heart? Your innermost being is where the, the Spirit of God is going to speak to you, is going to prompt you, is going to lead you, is going to uh, lead you into a place of safety, a, a, sa- a place of protection, a place of provision. We all need provision. A place of, uh, uh, of safety, of deliverance. Salvation comes to the heart. 
the first, the first, your first encounter with salvation that's provided through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is in your heart. Romans 10 says this, Apostle Paul says, it's where the heart man believes unto righteousness, or he believes what God has said and what, what the Father has done through Jesus. We believe that in our heart first, and then, then we believe that we're made right with God through our belief of what Jesus has done for us and His death, His burial, and His resurrection uh, over 2,000 years ago. When we hear the gospel, that's what we, we believe it. You just believe it. You believe it. And you, but you believe it in your heart. You might not can understand it at first, but you believe it in your heart. And you believe unto righteousness, or you believe unto the uh, that you are now through what Jesus has done become righteous or right with God. You define righteousness as being your standing before God Almighty, without any sense of guilt or shame or inferiority any longer because you've been made clean you've been cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ not through any works that you've done not any kind of religious works you've done but because of the the saving grace that comes through what Jesus did on the cross he was he was delivered up Romans says this the, the book of Romans says this it says he was delivered up Romans, Romans 4, he was delivered up for our transgressions, for our sins, for our iniquities. But he was raised, that's his resurrection, he was raised for our justification or our righteousness or to make us right with the Father. Therefore, we now have peace. We have a peace facing God the Father. He's restored us to the Father. Know this in your heart, that through your faith in Jesus, you have been restored to a place of right standing. In other words, uh, you've, you're, you've been restored. Your, the, your, your friendship, your covenant friendship with, the, with Almighty God has been restored. That which was lost in Adam when Adam sinned has been restored. And not only restored, it's a friendship, but it's also a relationship that's been restored that was once broken by sin or in our lives has now been restored through our faith or our trust in what Jesus has done and accomplished. It's a finished work. When Jesus was on the cross, he said that. One of the things he said was, it is finished. What, what was he talking about? He said the work that he'd been given to do on the earth, which was to be a sacrifice for our sins, he's the Lamb of God. That's what we, we're around Christmas time. We celebrate this. We, we're celebrating his birth, his purpose for entering into the earth realm and becoming a human being, God in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, was to be a... Ultimately, his purpose was to be the, be the sacrifice for our sins. He who knew no sin became sin. He became sin, or he took on all the sin of, of every generation of mankind. Past, present, and future, he took on their sins and became sin and was judged. Sin was judged on the cross. The mistakes, your mistakes, my mistakes, our, our sin was judged on the cross and the result of the wages of sin is death so Jesus as a man died on the cross he died he was a sacrifice for sin and <clears throat> according to the word of God three days later the spirit of the Holy Spirit raised him after he'd done he'd done whatever work he had to be had to be done on the earth he was raised from the dead, and he was not. He was not raised in a body that was subject to death any longer, but raised in a new and resurrected body. 
It's, it's very interesting that Jesus was was raised on on the on the uh, the Jewish holiday of the first fruits. He died on Passover. He died on Passover. He's our Passover lamb, but he was raised on the on the on the festival of first fruits. In fact, as uh, uh, Paul says this, he said he's he Jesus was made a first fruit of of many. He was he was the firstborn son of of a, of a vast family of sons and daughters of God. He brought about the initiation of the new creation. I'm trying to wave it, some folks. I'm not I'm not ignoring you. I'm trying to concentrate, but. We want to know, understand this, to guard over your heart. Guard over your heart, your inner man, your inner parts. It, said, it goes on to say, he said, he said, with all diligence, with all diligence, observe, guard, actually post a guard over you, your heart. When you know the thief, we know from John 10.10 10, that the thief, which is Satan, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The the where he's going to attack you, he uses your he speaks things into your mind to try to get to your heart. But Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, I've come that you might have life. Life, Zoe. That's a Greek word, but it means the highest form of life. It's the kind of life that, that God experiences. He came that you might have life and life more abundant. It's God, the Lord wants us to enter into abundant life or abundant. When I say abundant, I'm not just talking about material things. I'm not talking about just things, that earthly things, but uh, the abundance of His very life inside us. The greatest gift that's ever been given to mankind was the gift of Jesus who brought about the gift of the Holy Spirit, the, the Ruach Hokadesh, the Holy Spirit to come and dwell and to live in mankind, living man that that receive and that those that receive Jesus, for as many of those that receive Him, receive Him into their heart, He gave them the the power or the authority. To become sons of God, that means we're in relationship. There's not, there's not, there's not, there's not a distance any longer. There's not, there's no void between us that have believed between Him and us. In fact, is He's come so close to us that He dwells in us. He dwells in us. Many times we're not aware of this simply because we've not guarded our hearts and have allowed things to get into our heart that's blocking that's blocking this uh, sense of His presence with us. Now, He promised us in Hebrews, He said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And, and that's repeated twice. And anytime something's doubled in the Bible, it means it's, it's, like, it's an emphasis of a promise. No, no word of God is void of power. All the, whatever God, the Lord has spoken, has got the power of grace within it to accomplish it. So we need to know this: you're in union with God. You may not be aware of that. You may be a new Christian, or you may be a, have been a Christian for years, or maybe you're not even. You have not yet come to the place where you've received uh, Jesus as your Messiah, your Christ, your Savior, your Lord. Importantly, your Lord. That means He's got the say so, the, the last say in your life. So we need to understand. He says, guard, observe, or guard your heart with all diligence, because because out of it comes the springs of life. Springs in the sense that uh, the Hebrew word, Hebrew word there issues is is mishmar, mishmar. It means a place, uh, uh, a place that springs forth, a springing place that springs forth. So out of your heart springs life, that which is reviving, that which is lively, that which is flowing, that which is fresh, that which is that which is uh, 
new and full of life. If you're in a desert and you and you come and you're at, where there's no water and you come up to a place and we call it an oasis. We call it an oasis, a place where there is water that comes from beneath and comes up and comes to the surface. And then you can you can drink of that water and be refreshed of that water and, and literally save your life from that water that you drink. So Jesus said, "I fight." He said, "If you in the day that you believe on me, he said, I fight of your bellies or, or your this innermost part of your heart will spring rivers of living water, living water, which is the Spirit." He's speaking about the Holy Spirit. So I want to I want to encourage you that if it, the, the the number one preparation you can make in the times that we're living in, <clears throat> people talk always, are always referring to the end times, and I believe that we are living in the end times, but the, you have to realize the end times began at at the time of Jesus, because. <laughs> The word end there trans is teleos, which means times of completion or finished. So that's what Jesus said on the cross. It is finished. That means that the old has gone away and now there's a new there's a new thing that the Lord's doing in the earth. And he started over two thousand years ago, but it's coming closer and closer and closer to a uh, it's a finished thing, but it's coming closer to its completion even more. Uh, the completion of the completion is coming, in other words. Uh, it's not the end of the world. We need to get it, get that out of our mind. The, uh, the world's not going to end. The Apostle Paul even closed one of his prayers. I believe it's in Ephesians. It says, world, world without end. Amen. Uh, we need to understand the Lord wants us to be vessels of of We've been redeemed. He wants us to be vessels of redemption in the earth. Not we shouldn't be worried about getting out or getting getting out of this this getting off the planet. We need to be concerned about getting the kingdom of God into the planet, into people's hearts. That's where the kingdom is. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you and among you. Talking about about the church, the, the ecclesia. So we need to understand this. Guard your heart with all diligence. Now, I've gone around in circles to get to this point. What is one of the main ways you guard your heart? You guard your heart through maintaining your 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 forgiveness towards other people because the Lord has forgiven you he wants you to take that forgiveness that He's given you and give it to others. Extend that same forgiveness to others. It, the, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, while we were yet sinners or enemies of God, He, Christ, Jesus died for us. He, he, he went to the cross for us. Well, I know personally, I, I hated God. I cursed God. I, I didn't. I did not. Lo- I hated Christians. I did not want to have anything to do with them. But after I came into an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, and He gave me life and forgiveness and deliverance from the oppression of the enemy, from that point on, uh, my life was changed. So the Lord said, was saying to you right now, you extend forgiveness towards those that have done you wrong. It's, it's, very, it's a very strange thing that makes sense to our brain. But he says, forgive those that have done, done things to you. Forgive you, love your enemies. Do good for your enemies. Pray for your enemies. The quick, listen, the quickest way to break a curse off your life from a witch or for somebody that's that's trying to do something uh, supernaturally to harm you is to uh, is to extend forgiveness to them. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. And then secondly, I want to say this: learn guard your heart ab- about you not forgiving yourself. That's my wife. Okay, she just came in. Uh, Pamela, 
my beloved. We've been married 46 years. And we've, kept, we've stayed married because we learned this secret a long time ago about forgiveness. Forgiveness towards others. And a lot of Christians may have gotten that down. They, they're forgiving others. But there's still that sometimes it, it'll creep into your heart unforgiveness unforgiveness towards yourself. I believe this. Sometimes we could be harder on ourselves than we are on other people, because <clears throat> we're we're our our failures and our shortcomings are always before us. Where other people, you know, we're reminded when we see them that they may have done something to us, and we may have to deal with uh, going back and, and and making sure we're forgiving them and let and release them. But forgiving yourself of your failures and your shortcomings. There's none of us, we're no longer sinners, we're no longer sinners because we're born again. We're the righteousness of God in Christ according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17-21. We're a new creation. If any man be in Christ, they're a new creation. Behold, all things have passed away. All things have become new. We're no longer sinners but we still, we still, in our humanness, miss God. That's what sin is, is missing the mark. And because we're so aware of the holiness and the righteousness of God, and because we're aware of, of, of His great mercy towards us, we tend to condemn ourselves. It's a self-condemnation, because God's not condemning us. Romans 8 says there's therefore there's no therefore no condemnation any longer for those that are in Christ Jesus. You need to understand that. There is no condemnation. Read it for yourself, Romans 8. There is no condemnation from from God the Father towards you any longer. So where's the condemnation coming from? Well, it's coming from the enemy and it's coming from yourself. You're aware of your your, uh, your, your, your sin. You're aware of it. You've missed it, and so there comes a, this consciousness starts to try to rise up, 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 and, and attack your heart, and therefore sever your fellowship from the Father. First John one nine says, "If you confess your sin, He's faithful. God's faithful. Remember that He's faithful. He's faithful, and He's righteous or just." to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It's interesting that the, the human heart, the physical human heart, is constantly cleansing your blood. You, it's pumping your blood. It's, it's, well, it's a pumper. It pumps your blood through the cleansing eight, uh, organs of your body so that your blood is continually being cleansed. It's, it's taking life to every cell in your body giving you uh, physical life but it's also taking away the toxins the waste the as it were the physical sin out of your body and taking it through a filter the filter of your liver the filter of your kidneys and taking away all those toxins and so therefore you live that way disease comes from an interference with those that process in the physical it's the same way in the spirit as long as we walk in the light even as he is in the light the blood of jesus not our blood but his blood continually cleanses us from sin continually cleanses us from, from sin so the the devil the enemy wants to get into your heart and and, and cause you to condemn yourself and it is self-condemnation and, and cause you to become more aware of your, your shortcomings and your failures than, than, than you are aware of what Jesus has done for you and accomplished for you that's a settled thing, it's a fact. It's, it's all done for you. Now, uh, there's, hey Rick, how you doing? Uh, how's the weather out there? In, oh, you're in Arizona, huh? Uh, 
we're all we're all aware of this, and, and the enemy can beat down and cause Christians to become depressed and become even suicidal because they they feel like they failed. Uh, we've all fallen short at times of the glory of God, of the manifest presence of God. But that's not, that's what the enemy wants you to focus on, your failures and not the victories that have been accomplished through our faith in what Jesus has done. As we walk in, in this light of the forgiveness of our sins and the, and the reconciliation that's come about through what Jesus has done, then we can enter in to the victorious life, not in not on not in our, just our victory, but in His victory. He's He's made us more than conquerors. He's made us. Uh, in the, I believe it's in the in the Greek is that word more than conquerors is the word nike, hyper nike, hyper conquerors. You know, people talk about the hyper faith movement, hyper grace. You know, I can tell you what this is. This is a biblical hyper movement. It's called hyper victory. God wants us to enter into hyper victory because Jesus is the victory that Jesus has accomplished is a is a the greatest victory that's ever been accomplished. He won the greatest battle that was ever fought. He conquered the greatest enemy of mankind that is ever mankind has ever had, which is the enemy, which is the devil, which is Satan. He's put his foot on his throat. He's, he's taking the, the keys of death and hell away from him and, and giving them to us. We've got the keys now to death and to hell. We know how to bind. We know how to loose. We know how to forbid. And we know how to permit. And we can. And he said he'd build his church on that. He'd build his church on the revelation of who he is and his victory. Praise God. Well, anyway, this, this is the word for you today. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it come the issues or the springs of life. And the, the, once again, I pointed out the fact that the, the main the main weapon against your heart is unforgiveness towards others and towards yourself. Now, secondly, I put point this out: your heart feeds. Your heart needs nourishment. Just like your physical heart does. So nourish your heart on the presence of God. Nourish your heart on the Word of God. Uh, I tell you what, you know, junk food will kill you. It'll give you heart trouble, physical heart trouble. And and junk, stu- intellectual junk, will, will give you a, a spiritual heart tr- problems. S- quit feeding on this, this doom and gloom that's going around. There's so much doom and so much gloom, and I'm, I'm not sticking my head in a hole like an ostrich, and 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 denying that there's things going on in the on on the planet right now, that that are concerning, but I I still know that that He's made me more than a conqueror, He's made you more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, and that whatever comes up, whatever comes our way, we've been given the equipment. We've been given the power. We've been given the authority to not not be overcome by it, but to overcome. And that's what he wants us to be. He wants the the he's he he's he's coming he's coming back. He's going to return to the to the planet physically and, re, and restore things physically. But he's coming for a body. He's coming for a a, a, a church, a, a, cle- a called out people. That are victor or have learned how to be victorious over the works of the enemy, and and it's not beyond your reach, it's not beyond your comprehension. I don't care where you live, I uh, I don't care uh, what how much education or lack of education you have, or how spiritual you think you are. The victory is ours, not through anything that we've done except to believe what he's done. So with that, I'm going to get off and let you go. Guard your heart with all diligence because out of your heart comes the issues of life or the springs of life. 
or that which let me go back let me go back up here I, I'm looking on my computer <clears throat> I'm gonna read this to you one last time this is a new living translation guard your heart above all else make that your main concern seek, uh, that's seeking that's seeking the kingdom of God seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you guard your heart above all else for it determines it's the determining factor of the course of, of your life, of the, of the direction your life's going to take. The direction. I don't know how I get this. So I'm talking to somebody. I know I, I, this is an unusual time for me to be on, on Facebook right now. The course of your life right now is, is being set by the condition of your heart. The condition of your heart is determining the course of your life, or, your, or, or if you're going to reach the destination that the Father has has designed and planned for you, or you're going to get off and veer off course. Perhaps you've already done that. You've already veered off course. You already headed the wrong direction. But the Spirit of the Lord says this to you. He says, I'm calling you back with my the words of my of my mouth through this man that's speaking to you. I'm calling you back to come back on course. Release the hurt. Release not only the hurt that others have 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 placed on you, but release the hurt that's in your heart because of the mistakes that you've made, the choices that you've made even yesterday. You made a wrong, wrong choice, and now, now the enemy has is, is got a hold of you and is even trying to put sickness and disease on you and tell you that it's the punishment and the judgment of God. And I'm telling you here, I'm here to tell you that all your punishment, all the, judge, all the judgment that you would ever have placed on you was placed on Jesus 2000, over 2,000 years ago. And he bore, he took it. He took it. He took your sickness. He took your disease. And, and it doesn't belong to you anymore. So don't let the devil put it back on you. Be free today. I, I decree right now freedom over you. I decree right now the bond, the blindness, the scales fall from your eyes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the, the Messiah, the, the, the Savior of the world, the Lord of all creation. Be set free right now in the name of Jesus and be healed right now. Even now, healing is coming to your physical heart. There's, there's people have been diagnosed with heart conditions and the Lord says, if you turn and give your heart back to me, uh, and that's repenting and, and receiving my forgiveness that's already there, then, that, then your heart's going to be healed right now. Right now, I see that, I see that if stroke people stroke victims, that's their, their arteries are being clogged because of of stuff that's been in their heart is is, is manifest physically into their into their uh, their, their arteries. I say right now the inflammation is going down in Jesus' name. It's in and that which has affected your brain and your memory. It's going to be restored right now. Get back on path. I'm calling you back. Call you back onto the path, the path of life, the path of righteousness, and the, and the healing's coming right now. Those that have that have had have valves, their heart valves that are not functioning properly right now. In the name of Jesus, I, I decree a, a a miraculous healing right now to you. If if if. This is the condition. If you'll let this stuff go, let it go right now. Pray with me right now. Father, I just forgive myself. I, I missed it. I, I receive your forgiveness and now cleanse me, Father God. And I walk in your I walk in your life by the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And be set free right now. God bless you. I, I, I'll see you later. I appreciate your, uh, your waving. Hey, Tab, how you doing? Thank you, Jesus. She says, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I got way too serious. Ah, oh, way too serious.
Praise God. I'm a happy man, normally. And a crazy man, they say. I don't know. But it's this way Jesus made me. So, I'm going to enjoy it. God bless you. Have a great day. If I don't see you before uh, New Year's, have a great 2019. What, these are my predictions for 2019. Jesus is Lord. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you.